Guys, you've been awesome with the questions the last few videos. I've gotten so many, so many that I need, I need to answer. I do. Um, so what I'm going to do over the next couple of videos, I'm going to be grouping them together. So if it's about shipping, I'm going to try and get your shipping videos together or your shipping questions together to answer those. So today we're going to talk about shipping and a couple other things. So guys, let's just get right into it. So we're doing some videos in the car today as they're doing some uh, roof work on the house behind me. So it's pretty loud back there. Um, first question. First question comes from Jason. He wants to know about PIP claims, you know, the eBay standard envelope. Every time he submitted a claim, he's never got his shipping charge back and he wants to know how I'm able to get my shipping charge back every time. That That's a good question. Yes, when I refund shipping, I do get my money back from the PIP claim. Uh, how am I able to do that is the question. Um, it's because I offer free shipping. I know it doesn't make sense. Getting your shipping back when you offer free shipping. Um, I offer free shipping, but it's baked into the price of the card. So when the PIP claim goes through, they're refunding you the price of the item. So when they look at the eBay listing, what's the price of the item? $1.75, 63 cents of that is shipping. Now, if I did say a dollar five card plus 63 cents shipping, I would only get back a dollar five, I believe. Um, if any of you guys charge shipping um, and file a PIP, let me know if that's true. That's what I'm assuming because they're refunding the item, not the shipping costs. Uh, so for me, that is how I get my shipping cost back. It's baked into the price of the car. So $1.75, free ship. When I get the claim processed, I get $1.75. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I'm surprised eBay opened. They weren't able to answer, answer that. But at the same time, it doesn't surprise me because... It's eBay and most people that work at eBay all have different answers for everything and a good amount of them don't know anything. <laughs> uh, to put it simple, a lot of us know more than they do about their own platform and how things run. Um, but yeah, that's how I get my shipping costs back. So how are sellers selling cards for 99 cents? charging a dollar 11 shipping but then only sending via the one ounce 63 cent rate is that right um how are sellers able to make any money how are they making profit is it purely a volume play that's the question we need to answer right now from nn so we got another great question here about shipping um and let's see seller charges 99 cent and then charges a dollar 11 shipping but sends it out 63 cents that's allowable. Um, you are allowed to charge whatever you want for shipping and then send it out however you send it out at whatever cost it is. And you get to eat the profit. It's part of the reason why eBay now charges their fees with the shipping price included. And they're not just, you know, charging the fee on the item price. It's item price plus shipping. And it's because a lot of sellers were doing that. They would charge like 99 cent and then have an insane shipping price to make their profit and eBay wasn't getting their money. So that's why you see the fees that way. Uh, but shipping a dollar 11 or paying, charging a dollar 11 and then shipping, oops, shipping by a 63 cents, it's allowable. Is it right? I wouldn't say so, but it's allowable. Now, one of the tricks with that is, say you're uh, charging for priority mail and you tell the buyers that it's going to come priority mail, but you ship it ground advantage. Or if you say you're going to ship this card ground advantage, but then ship it standard envelope, that you can get in trouble for. Because um, what eBay wants is the shipping time. They want the item to get to the buyer by the time it should. And if you're shipping in a slower method than what you told them they would get it and charge them for, then you could possibly get in trouble if there's a complaint. <clears throat> Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, all in all, yes, it. you are right. It's volume. 
when you're doing low end cards, 99 cent plus shipping, $1.75 or $2 free shipping, you're focused on volume. You don't, you're not going to make much money off of anything, even 99 cent plus $1.11 shipping. Take the 63 cents off that $1.11, that's 50 something cents. 99 cent is pretty much all covered by the fees. So, yeah, you're making money on volume. Now, overcharging shipping by like 50 cents but hope you hope that answers your question a little bit um i really just like to take the guessing game out i just charge the free shipping i'm not going to charge somebody the dollar 11 and send at a lower rate just to you know have that eye popping 99 cent in my listing because honestly me when i buy I can give two shits <laughs> what a person charges. I look at the overall total, and that is item that I had sent plus shipping. I look for the lowest possible total price, not the lowest item price. All right, guys. Now, don't forget, Monday, Christmas Day, we are opening a box of Hoops Holiday, Hoops Winter, whatever you want to call it, blaster box. And we're going to be going Victor Wimbenyama hunting. If you want to join in on the hunt, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you see when this video drops and see if we get any victors. And not just that, after that video, all of those cards will be live on eBay for sale. That's right. All of them will be in the store at the same time the video drops. So if we get any hits, make sure to hit the store quick and be the one to get your purchase. All right. My boy Jeremy, he likes the shipping process. He thinks it's pretty efficient. It works pretty well, except for one thing. That is the blue painter's tape. He doesn't like it. He would rather use team bags. And you know, I know a lot of you guys are, but I'm gonna tell you right now why I use the blue tape and when I do use team bags, cause I use those too. All right, so continuing with the shipping talk today, uh, Jeremy, I know you're watching. Jeremy, you watch, you comment on a lot of videos. Thank you, I appreciate your support. Um, he says he likes my process. It looks very efficient. Um, only thing he would change is the blue tape on the top loaders. He prefers to use team bags. And you know, that's a good one to talk about. I have different ways I do this. If it is a multi-card order where I'm going to have multiple cards in a card saver, like the first order we did today, I use team bags. I'll put them in there in the card saver and then pop them in a team bag. It's multiple cards. I just, you know, I don't feel like the tape properly secures. I mean, it does, but you know, just want that little bit extra. Uh, but when it comes to a single card, I'd rather just put a piece of tape. Um, does the customer prefer the team bag? Some might. I'm going to tell you probably 75% or more. I'm ballparking a number here, but I'm pretty sure it's a vast majority of the public, especially those buying these cheap low-end cards, really doesn't care if it's in a team bag or some blue tape. Um, they just don't want scotch tape. <laughs> uh, they don't really care. And so part of the reason why I do it this way, instead of putting a team bag on everything, is cost. Like, team bags, they're expensive when it comes to, when it comes to the low-end cards. Blue tape, this blue tape roll has lasted me almost a month now, and I still got quite a bit. So four or five bucks for this, there's a bunch of team bags. The cost is just so much cheaper for me to use blue tape on these single cards. So at the end of the day, I use blue tape on singles and anything in a card saver. I'll go, I'll go to your route, Jeremy. I'll use the team bags. Um, it's for me, it's really comes down to just money. Um, low end, your margins are thin, razor, razor thin. You got to save any money where you can. And I feel just like using a team bag for every single order. It's just going to be too expensive. Now Spurs fan, 
he wants to know how much we make on average monthly selling these low-end cards, especially as part-timers. He's curious because he's interested in getting into this and it would help to kind of have a ballpark figure on average what he could expect to get. Now I will say Spurs fan, keep an eye out Monday. Monday's video, we're opening a box of Hoops Winter and we're hoping to get some Victor rookies. So maybe we'll get some Spurs cards. All right, switching the topics a little bit. I'm gonna answer this one real quick. Um, Spurs fans is thinking about getting into this. Um, wants to know how much people make a month doing these low-end cards. And Spurs fans, I'll tell you, as an extreme part-timer, who just pretty much does this when I have any free time, um, or might be sitting in front of the TV while I'm watching Late Night with my wife, um, I walk out with maybe a couple hundred a month. Not gonna lie, guys, I don't make much. Probably, I think my best month this year, I walked out with 400 bucks. My worst month, walked out with a buck 70. You know, after fees, items, all that. Um, on the year, I'm probably going to wind up profiting maybe a thousand bucks. I know. Paul, oh, all this work you did this year, it's not worth your time. I'm getting ready. I'm ready right now to see the comments get flamed on that. I already see it popping up. You guys are doing it, aren't you? You're typing right now. Paul, oh, it's not worth your time. You're just wasting your time. Um, but for me, I'm not. I'm doing what I love. It's a hobby. Um, Spurs fan, if you're thinking about doing this, it's just a way to get a little extra cash. And it's just for kind of hobby, for fun. You're not going to put every waking moment into it? Yeah. You can expect a couple hundred a month if you're doing low end. If I was doing cards with a little more value, I could probably kick this up a notch, which I'm hoping next year to do. I'm going to start adding some lots in 2024 to work on getting the price up. Um, but yeah, it's not much. Usually anywhere from 150 to 400 a month is what I'll walk away with, which again, for me, with the time I put into it and the time I do it, when I do it, it's worth it. All right, guys, we talked a lot about shipping today. And I know a lot of you have asked me in the past, we've covered it in many videos, what I use to print my labels, where do I get it, all of that. Why don't you watch this video, shipping sports cards, what's a game changer for me and my business. Um, so go check that video out and I'll catch you guys on the next one.